Last time on She Rules the Waves, we did a million small projects to prepare Sedna for the upcoming journey, before it was finally time to launch her for the last time into the Med. We took down the masts and stowed them on deck before leaving, we hit the rocks outside the fuel dock, dodged some misinformation, but finally locked into the river Ron. We almost knocked our masts overboard while not finding anywhere to stop for the night, we had to chase markers with a torch in the darkness, but eventually drove through the moonlight and moored outside the lock in Bocaire. And that's where we are now. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Linus Jackson, a sailing musician and father of two, trying to get my boat Sedna home to Sweden for a major refit. And in time, I plan to be a full-time liveaboard and world traveler. Join us on this journey. Good morning people! Last night we had to drive through the night, because we couldn't find anywhere to moor. At last we arrived here, at the lock of Bouquer, around 3 am. So naturally we decided to take it slow this morning and sleep in. As well as check out the lock from above, to see what we are getting ourselves into. This lock is definitely something else than any of us have experienced before. I mean, the sheer size of it. And look how tiny Sedna looks in comparison. But no use waiting any longer. Let's do this. Being our first real lock of this trip, we weren't really sure how long the preparation would be, so we untied the lines way too early and had to hover outside for quite some time, waiting for the light to turn green. But there it is, green, let's go. First real lock. It's closed. Woo. Yuki the boy king. Boy. Boy king. Yeah, boy. <laughs> the man king and the boy king. <laughs> This seems to be the waterline, almost there. I guess we're up. Let's see if it opens. They're just lowering the door. That's pretty cool. All things considered, that went really well. That is, up about until now. This is the moment when the engine suddenly died and we were scrambling around to figure out the problem while the boat slows down and slowly starts drifting backwards. After a few minutes, we got old Tommaso the engine going again, turned around and kept going. But do you remember this scene from the last episode? For now it seems to be going pretty good. And <laughs> yeah, we jinxed it. We jinxed it bad. Because just a few hundred meters later, the engine died once again. I don't think we made it more than a kilometer from the lock until we ran into trouble again. And this time we slowly drifted towards the riverbank and got stuck around here. And the thing is that if we were to come loose and keep drifting backwards, we could end up in the hydroelectric plant back here. And nobody wants that. Yeah, come on. 
So after we secured ourselves, which meant that Pelle volunteered to wade to land with the backup anchor, we started the immense task of troubleshooting. We bled the system, bypassed the possibly leaking filter, but still couldn't get him to start. And when something actually started burning in a relay, we decided to call it quits, take a lunch break and try to call for help. For the record, we are at the moment stuck on the riverbank and uh, we're trying to get help, but it doesn't really work. So we decided to have a lunch break. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so my crew member Jukke here is making some coffee. And I think I'm going to tell you what happened now. Um, the thing is that suddenly, just after we came through the lock, which you can see over there, our engine died. We figured it was just like a fuel problem, so we refilled some fuel, we bled the system, it started, and then uh, about a kilometers later it died again. Uh, so now we're stuck on the riverbank. We just drifted in here and, um, yeah. And uh, it's Easter and no one really wants to help us. So, uh, we called private companies, the lock company and the fire department, but because of Easter and the ongoing transport strike, we were on our own. Nobody wanted to help. And if you're on your own, you might as well keep trying, right? And if it wasn't for the fact that I bought two new just-in-case batteries before we left, and our friend Ben's genius ideas used multi-spray as starter spray, we might still be stuck on that riverbank today. But... I forgot to film, can we do it again? <laughs> Pelle replaced a burnt out connection in the relay and although we still needed starter spray to start it, at least the engine was now running. This one just burned, but it's replaced and it was probably just one of the problems. But for some reason it now works, so let's keep our fingers crossed that we are able to get out of here. Then it was just a matter of hoisting the anchor from land and taking off. Did you really fall for that? Oh no, just wait a minute. You remember this guy, right? Yeah, because suddenly I noticed that the engine was overheating and the charging light was on. Okay, uh, we're at it again. Um, we're now anchored and because it turns out that the, the fan belt just blew up and we're now anchored. Uh, so we can fix it. It's not our day, this. Always remember to get spares, people. Trust me. And although a messy project, at least we knew that this was fixable. All right, then we go again. Seems to be working now, but... But no more jinxes, maybe? Okay, so we got the engine started. It seems to be charging and it seems to be uh, cooling for now. Um, we'll go and we'll see. But do you remember a while ago when I fixed the windless manual operation just in case the electrics didn't work? Guess what? It didn't. So I'm really glad I had the manual option, although it wasn't exactly a piece of cake to get that heavy anchor and many meters of chain up manually. Hey. We are present. Hello. Yeah, school. Yes. Yeah. Hello. But but what do you say for something? No. When we are in France, you speak French. La merde, boubou, la neuf. And here is the captain and the owner of the ship. And the luckiest look. man alive. <laughs> look, look how, how just how, how good he is. How good he is to, to drive the boat. Yes, he's so skillful in his steering. Oh, okay. uh, look out, it's oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Although we felt pretty good to goof around, our best option for mooring for the night is still quite a bit away in Avignon, so we probably have to come in in the dark once again. But who cares, 
few hours ago we all thought the trip was over. Perspectives, people. Perspectives. Hey Lacey, uh, I'm just gonna, there's so much been happening today that I just figured I'm gonna let future Linus tell you in the voiceovers because this is just too much. So uh, here we go. Yeah, this day was truly a roller coaster, and I wouldn't have made it without the amazing crew. Jesper, the Danish guy who met us on the dock, had some more information about the strike, so we decided to stay put here tomorrow. Explore the town, maybe revise the plans a little. That's next week for you though, so check out our social media, give us a like, become a patron, or at least click the subscribe button and the little bell. And until next time, take care.